Hey, uh, before we get started on the podcast, we want to talk about our friends over at Get Superleaf dot com trey you turned me on to kratom like you were I, I feel like in a lot of ways you're a hipster on many things but this is probably the number one thing that i'm like no trey knew about this before anybody knew about this it's this yeah, and, uh, one sleeve being shorter than the other yeah that's it uh it's, it, yeah i just i'd be sitting weird uh yeah. but um uh, I don't remember. I don't. I, I, at this point, it's been so long ago. I don't even remember how I found out about kratom. I genuinely don't. Just poking around in the the dark know, webs back the in the nethers day. of the internet. I don't get on the literal dark web. I'm too computer dumb for that. But just like you know, Reddit or something. And I saw it pop up. Oh, what's that? Looked into it. Next thing you know, a few years later, I'm like full bore advocate for this stuff because it uh, it hits real hard. If you still don't know what kratom is, it's like. Um, it's a plant. It's just a plant that grows. It's native to Southeast Asia. Botanically speaking, it's related to the coffee plant. They've been using it in Southeast Asia as like a natural, you know, herbal remedy for literally centuries, generations. And the way it works is it uh, it gives you energy while also re- it energizes your mind while relaxing your body. It just helps you feel good. Basically, it's like it gives you the energy boost that coffee does, but without the like jittery kind yeah of nervy side effects of it yeah that's pretty important also, i think for a lot of people because i got a buddy and i was explaining to him one time i was like no kratom it's great i take it and like you know i can focus and it gives me a lot of energy and he's like oh you mean like adderall or something i'm like no 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 no. i was like you know how adderall also makes you feel like oh oh god oh god you get like tweak from south park i was like kratom is not that it's like a it's like a real calm transition into uh into energy and focus Yes, absolutely. So it's useful in a lot of situations. Just, I mean, I honestly, I'd use it like most people use a cup of coffee, mm-hmm. really. Just like, you know, you're getting getting older, it's the middle of the day, you start to drag, take a little bit of Kratom. Or, you know, if you need to, need that, some extra courage to ask somebody on a date, ask your boss yeah. for a raise, or run the extra mile because Kratom is often used as a pre-workout. I do that. I don't get down with it like that, but I know a lot of people do. Your boy does. My buddy Thompson and Corey does. Yeah, so. But my thing is, like, it's not like I was, I was like, yeah, I use it as a pre-workout, but that's only because I just happen to kind of take Kratom all day, every day, and I do work out, so therefore I have had it before my workout. But I did notice that it, like, really does, like, if I take an extra dose, I'm like, oh, yeah, I can do this, like, especially running or walking. I'm like, I'm definitely getting my 20,000 steps today because of Kratom. Yeah. Right anytime on. we talk about this, you guys know I bring up Andy. I take Kratom. I enjoy Kratom. I think it's uh, also a performance enhancer when it comes to doing stand-up comedy, going back mm-hmm. to that courage of asking somebody on a date. You want to talk about courage, doing a new joke, or just being looser on stage. But I always talk about Andy because it has – quite literally changed our lives in the way that it has uh, allowed her to manage her anxiety issues throughout the day. And, Mm. um, I, I, you know, it's a plant and I think it's a godsend. Any part of me that still believes in the fake Lord believes that the fake Lord put this on earth uh, for us. And it hits for me. Well, here's what you can do too. Uh, and first off for beginners, uh, we recommend capsules, which I still take capsules, even though I'm not a beginner, just because it is, you know, it's just easier to, for me to measure the dose and all that good stuff. Um, we also recommend the green strains. It's the most popular. It's going to be a lot of energy, but not necessarily the most intense one. Uh, by the way, hundred percent satisfaction or your money back guaranteed. Uh, when you go to get superleaf.com slash well read, and you're going to get 20% off with the promo code well read. That's get superleaf.com slash well read for 20% off. And also, I want to I want to add this, and it, I, they don't have it in our read here for probably good reasons, but I do think a lot of people will be interested in this. You say it's related to coffee, and we were talking mainly about the energy, but it's also related to coffee in the sense that if you really need to get a jump start on what we call blowing your butt out, uh, it will help you with that too. <laughs> and, I, and I'm not sitting here telling you it gives you diarrhea. It does not. I'm just, you know how mm-hmm. coffee, it's like you finish your cup of coffee and you're like, okay, here we go. Time for, for time to hit regularity city. It helps even more. Like anytime I know I'm like, I need to take a shit. Boom. Go take Promo some Promo code colon blow. <laughs> I'm kidding. Promo code is well read. <laughs> well read at getsuperleaf.com slash well read. And uh, we thank them so much for sponsoring the podcast and real quick i want to say when you type in get super leaf it will automatically take you to another website that they own that is the 
scientific name of Kratom. So don't be thrown off by that. Yeah. And this company is a company me and Andy have used, and I think Trey turned mm-hmm. me on to them, even before they sponsored us or knew about it. Yeah. So it's a company yeah. we like. For years before they ever uh, approached the podcast, I was I was almost starstruck when they approached I, I was too. I was like, oh my I've God, it's them. them. <laughs> I've been a loyal customer of this specific company for a long time. And we're so now. stupid that we didn't ever once think to reach out no, like, we don't like, leave reaching out. Like, oh, th- hey, this is <laughs> this is a really good product that we think our fans would like, and we like it. Okay, let's end the dialogue there. Awesome. Yeah, it's extra uh, funny because I did the reverse. They reached out, and I didn't read the email carefully enough. And I was like, oh, man, I got to, like, go against the brand I actually like. And it turns out I didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. But go So get superleaf.com slash wellread, promo code wellread, and we thank them for sponsoring the podcast. They're the liberal rednecks. They like cornbread, but sex they care way too much, but don't give a fuck. They're the liberal rednecks that makes some people upset, but they got three big old dicks that you can suck. Well, hey, here we are, and uh, uh, not only are we here, where we were uh, was uh, was Omaha, Nebraska, and I would like to thank everybody uh, for coming out to those shows. They were freaking awesome. It was a uh, hey, it was a it was a plum balmy thirty degrees <laughs> on the, the yeah. first show, but we'll be in uh, those are great shows. Thank you for coming out. You go to wellreadcomedy.com for tickets. This coming weekend we're going to be in Indianapolis, and then next weekend we're in Appleton, Wisconsin, where today fellers, I don't know if you know this, um, but oh, I keep God. up with the weather. Today in Appleton, Wisconsin, it is negative fifteen degrees. <sighs> We so and that's and it's only going to get colder. Bruh. <laughs> negative, gotten... negative. If it was fifteen, I would still be like, "God damn, this is negative 15. I met a guy from there last night watching the Chiefs game. I want to talk about that. Whose daughter goes to UT? And I said, you know, we were talking about all that, and I was like, "Come on out." And he goes, "Eh, maybe we'll see. Sometimes it gets cold. <laughs> I don't leave the house." Well, I understand. I do understand that. But, you know, all you got to do is get from your house to the car and from your car to inside Skyline Comedy Club where they will have, I assume, great heat. Um, But, yeah, no, that's dude. I saw a lot of people that, you know, aren't from there just like, oh, my God, why on God's green earth would y'all be going to Appleton, Wisconsin uh, in February? And I was like, well, somebody has to, for the love of God. What do you think? These people just <laughs> just get, they just don't get entertainment for three to four months out of the year just because it's negative 15. Yeah, well, come down and see us to prevent yourself from doing the shining. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I'm real, I'm real pumped, uh, but, you know, that's going to la- layer up, fellas, because we're there for the whole freaking weekend. Yeah, I don't know how to. I we've we've gotten lucky so far, really, because I mean, yeah, we've been in Chicago, we've been in Illinois, and then uh, Nebraska in January. And in Nebraska, every day of the week leading up to when we arrived, it was a high of like four or five. Yeah. Uh, but then both times, both weekends when we were in town, it was like thirty, 30. degrees, yeah. which is like that's fine. 30s, I, that don't hit for me, but like it's, I can, I can, I can walk thirty, dude. Yeah. I I walk five miles a day in thirty, no problem. Yeah, I mean I won't, but I can, I can, I, I put on a hoodie and a jacket, and I can survive it. Yeah, I don't think I've ever experienced negative fifteen. Well, it, before, it's that's fo- that's forty five degrees difference than what that's that's like that's astonishing to think about. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I mean, I may not, I may not make it through that weekend if it's that cold the whole time. I don't know what's going to happen. I may just heart just give up. Yeah, it will be. Just if you don't come out, comedy, come out and watch the liberal redneck quit. Yeah, yeah, watch him quit on stage Perish from the earth. I don't. I can't. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I know if you if you're from a place like that, you get used to it, but like. You don't ever get truly you. There's no way you can get truly used to negative fifteen. Now I, I've had one experience, and this was a windshield thing. But like my thing is like, well, if it feels this way, then that's what it is. So I I don't understand. But in 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 Iowa, a couple years ago at Christmas, the windshield factor the day we left was negative thirty degrees. 
And I'm not kidding when I say that. I thought I was just being a huge pussy, which I was. But we were outside packing the car. And they were all like, hey, you need to you need to get gloves. And I was like, oh, I'm just throwing some stuff in the car. And they were like, no, no, no you don't understand. You will you're, you're, you will literally get like irre- irreparable frostbite if you're out there for two minutes in negative 30. I'm like, okay. I, yeah, I get out there. And I start, I wasn't able to breathe through my nose. And I was like, I was like, oh, my sinuses all of a sudden. And and my father and I was like, no, your snot's freezing. And I fucking put my pinky up there. And sure as shit, my snot was icicles. Oh, my God. What the fuck, dude? All right. Also, also, this is a good thing. I just remembered I'm either going to already be dead or acclimated because I will be driving there from another part of Wisconsin with the gutter bumpkin himself. No, really? will be at these shows. So, DJ will be at the shows if you need a little extra on us to come on out. He says he's got oh some God. comedy about living on a bus with a goat he's been dying to do. And so that's going to be good unless DJ and I freeze to death together, which is our goal. So perhaps we won't make it. <laughs> well, dude, this is that was a genuine reaction for me. This is the first time hearing of that. I did not know unless I missed that in the group thread. It was the one night you got drunk on a trip. I told you. I say, yeah, you, you, you did miss that in the group thread, but that, but that's all right. I was still very no. Sweet the, to well, this hits for me. It's nice to yeah. <laughs> I'm so we excited. Did, we were aware of that. The audience wasn't though. It hits for them. Oh, it's for man. me too. I'm just saying. See, that's yeah. that right there is exactly why I do not drink anymore. This is the one isolated incident where I because I do, I don't like I know I know we can oh whoa you were drunk at, whenever this happened clearly but like the, like the way that I. <laughs> Yeah, I know, I know, I know. But still, my point is the way that I used to operate. I'm, compa- I'm not Two comparing ago, it. Yeah. I'm not comparing. I'm Corey. not <laughs> comparing it to a fucking normal human being, Trey. I'm saying compared to the way I used to operate, I think saying I don't really drink anymore is true. Because I didn't say I don't drink anymore. I said I don't really drink anymore. I don't really drink anymore. Like me getting drunk two days ago is kind of an isolated incident because like I really just don't be doing it. Also, two days ago, I wasn't really fucking drunk. I had four beers. No, I don't. Yeah. I mean, Drew kind of jokingly said, oh, you must have. That was the one day you got drunk or whatever. But dude, you don't need you do not need to be drunk to just completely I mean, miss a right. thing. Because because we've looked at that, that's it. true. That's that true. happens a lot, actually. It I does, would, but I also to defend myself. Wait, wait, wait. I just want to. I was going to stop for a second. I just said, especially if I said it, and I don't think you even heard me say that. I did no, I heard you I say, heard it. You say it. Not, I heard you say it, but my, I was trying to. I was in the middle of trying to defend myself. On we have three three group texts that we're all a part of. Maybe four that we're all it was a part in person, of. That, like, though. What? I haven't been with DJ in person. No, Drew, it wasn't. No, this is also funny. It definitely oh. was on the text thread because DJ was on there because I was telling him, I was like, well, bless your heart, buddy, because it's going to be negative 15 or whatever. And, it, you when, know, whenever. You come, yeah, but fine, I but. thought that me and you, at least, Trey, talked about it after that in person. About, so what happens uh, to me? We were talking about maybe, how it didn't was, make it hit, even if it didn't hit because it was, you know. Well, like, I don't okay. know. It definitely started on the text thread, though. I know this, this is it, riveting for everybody, but. Well, I'm just fucking saying I, a DJ text thread's different, but to defend myself, a lot of the times when I do lose stuff, it's that I actually do go to bed early now at like 930, which to y'all out there is 730, which is when the group chat just, well, which is when the group chat actually starts kind of getting lit. I will wake up in the morning and I'm not kidding. Sometimes I will have 380 text messages. I'm not going to go back. I get overwhelmed and I'm like, eh, start over. I'm not going to fucking, I'm not going back. Dude, yeah. When I lived on the East Coast, and back then you were drinking regularly, Corey, so you would be yep. up on that thread. Yes. And I would wake up sometimes to like 140 messages. Yeah. And yeah, I, would well, just, I would be like, at some point I was like, I just, you know, I'm sure somebody said too many- something to me that I should respond to either, you know, in terms of what we're doing with our lives or an insult that I need to defend. But it's just, I don't care anymore. Apple Apple adding the function of being able to reply to individual texts is honestly the best thing that they've done for like for people like us. Because yeah, used to you'd go back through and you're like, God damn, there's like five or six things that I really want to comment on. But by the time I get to the bottom, they're already on this. But then you can like go back and isolate one. But yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I just, I miss a lot. But any fucking ways, I'm real happy that I'm finding out that I get to see DJ in Wisconsin. That's going to be awesome. So everybody come out to the shows. Yeah, well hit. What's this uh, Abraham Lincoln stuff you you're on about? So this just blew my fucking mind because I, you know, I listen to a lot of history podcasts and shit. And I texted y'all a little bit about this, but I want the audience to know, like, 
you you just Abraham Lincoln and his assassination and like the Emancipation mm-hmm. Proclamation is something that like you kind of just assume. Yeah, I pretty much know all there is to know about that because you've heard about it your whole life. And you're like, yeah, I know all the key moments. John Wilkes Booth, he was a, you know, Southern sympathizer and he was an actor and shit like that. But I've been listening to this podcast called 1865, which to give them a free plug, I will. It's on the Wondery Podcast Network and it's fucking delightful. It's like a story podcast where they they it's actually like scripted history or whatever. And they have actors come in and play them or whatever. But, but dude, it's all true. But it's all true. Yeah, yeah, it's all true. And they just like script what all happened. Like, but so it go right now. Give your whole uh, summation of like Abraham Lincoln and how he got assassinated and why he got assassinated, just from what you know from so, your life. The fifth Baldwin brother, so the least <laughs> famous brother of an acting family. Um, I thought he was, was like actually no, he kind hit. of famous. He did hit. Yeah, he did I was hit. about to say, I always heard it. He was like, kind of famous. It would be but like he had a George a famous... Clooney killed the president or something yeah. like that. No, know that's I don't accurate, think, I, I think, I think that we do that. I think this, this is one of those things that I learned that's probably, I guess, not as juicy as what Corey's about to drop on us, where that's a bit of a misnomer. I think that he was like the third famous person in his family. Now, he still <laughs> was known, but I think he had a brother and or a dad who hit way harder than him. He um, he was a good actor, but he was more popular. He was more popular than he was good. You know what I'm saying? Like he was he dated a bunch of socialites and stuff. Oh yeah, so like, George Clooney. No, I'm just kidding. So, <laughs> yeah, no, no, that, well, that's yeah, the, the only reason I was going to say. I don't want to say somebody because then it'll seem like I'm right. shitting on them. But like yeah. I don't. You everybody yeah, knows those actors who like hear about it. I just, some, well, I just, I don't like to, boy actor. I just like don't like Disney, to do like a Disney channel type actor or something I, like that. I used to would say Even somebody some like, I used hard. to would say somebody like Channing Tatum, but I genuinely See, do I think he, Channing Tatum. I do too. Channing I do Tatum. too. I do too. But like, you know, some people think of him like that. It's like, oh yeah. Like, like pre, uh, uh, Fox catcher and pre magic Mike and stuff like that. He was just like, yeah, he's a good looking dude or whatever. But like, I do think he's good, but you get what I'm saying. The Paul, Paul Walker. Paul fucking Paul Walker. Walker. Paul there you Walker. go. Perfect you example, go. and he can't say shit. So, nope. anyways, he, um, he, he was. So John yeah. Wilson's book was the Paul Walker of his time, inarguably. And yeah, so, I, I think, I think it's, uh, I think he's one of the Baldwin's. I, I, he's not Alec. I think. No, he's, uh, no, no. I dude. Mean, Corey's but, like knee deep in this Abe Lincoln shit right but now. The, the Baldwin's. But, the Baldwins weren't like they're not as popular as what Wilkes Booth was. He was like this. He okay. he dated socialized. But here's the thing that fucking blew my mind that I didn't know. One of the reasons he was so popular, especially in the Washington area, is because he was a kind of a pimp. Like I mean, like as a, a I don't mean like pimp. I don't mean like oh he's a pimp. No no no. Now there was the rumors of that too. Like he could fucking. <laughs> be could, so funny if that is what you. Ooh, y'all know John Wilkes Booth was a pimp. Boy. But dude, but dude, but dude, he was that too. He was that. He was that too. <laughs> like he apparently slung dick like nobody's business, but oh, but he but he also was a pimp, like regular pimp. pimp. Yeah, yes. like he he hung out with socialites so much <laughs> that he would like hook up congressmen and senators with all these chicks and shit like that on the low. And so like yeah. they kind of just like all kept him up, you know. And so like he was always he was just real super fucking popular, and he was he was a good looking guy. But so what what do you so know he was about Jeffrey like, Epstein? Yeah, well, except for these women were of age, you know, they were... Age was different back in, but they weren't. No, the, but well, they the, weren't. No, 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 I'm not saying all of them were, but I will tell you that this, the one that that dropped, dropped this bombshell on me about the whole assassination, she definitely was. Like, she was... She was 100%. She'd been in the game for a while. She was like an actress or whatever. But like Abraham Lincoln, we all know he gets shot by John Wilkes Booth. Um, and, and he says, uh, sex semper, sex semper Phoenix or whatever, the South will rise again or whatever when he jumps off. Somebody's like, yeah, he's a, he's a goddamn, you know, he's a Southern sympathizer, which was true. But like the reason that he was able to get to Abraham Lincoln, know exactly when he was going to be there, know exactly that he wasn't going to have as much security with him is because this girl who was Senator Hale at the time's daughter was engaged to Abraham Lincoln's son, but fucking John Wilkes Booth on the side and was feeding her inform- him information and shit like that. And that's how like this whole thing so fucking Abraham orchestrated. Lincoln's like would be daughter-in-law sold him out yes. to John Wilkes Booth. Yes, and, and have you ever out. in your life heard that? No, why, the never, fuck did, why the fuck yeah. is that not more of a thing? 
that's super. That's very yeah. wild. In my yeah, yeah. I mean, and it's I a woman. Like every, it's not like the normal history writers wouldn't want to blame her. Well, right. Like Abraham. Yeah, Lincoln that's a great shot, point. Abraham Lincoln getting shot has to be taught to like kids, fourth graders, and right? Shit. Right. So like, it's gonna begin with a very cursory level explanation of what happened. Yeah, and I and, get that. And but the, right. I don't know how it's such a one of the most noteworthy events in American history. I do still think it's wild that then you go out on your on your way through high school and college. If you go to college and shit, and never, I don't, I've never heard I've never, that. And I I, you think. know, I'm a huge history guy. I fucking love history, and I've read about That's the right, Civil just, War a just, ton of time. Just to review here, um, all right, Jeffrey Epstein, Paul Walker, Wilkes Booth mm-hmm. was a. <sighs> Is this was he getting paid? I think Heidi Flox is probably was he, better. Was he a match? Was he a matchmaker or like a literal pay me money and you can have nope. sex with this woman? That 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 one like that he he was he would like okay. you know these senators and stuff like obviously they couldn't just go to a whorehouse. Not that they well yeah. they probably could, but like I'd say I figured they would. But but but, but like uh uh yeah but like whores don't hit maybe no like, exactly. Both he had the he had the hidden whores. He did he have the hidden whores. He had the regular he had actresses. Whorehouse. He did have yeah. the hidden horse. Yeah, he did have the hidden horse. But like, no, dude, like that's that's how that all like fucking played out. And like, so there's a, a couple of circumstances where well, Abraham Lincoln didn't have his top security that night, which he had requested. So basically, everyone, everyone in like the whatever was the CIA back then, which it wasn't called the CIA, but all the you mean kind the of, Secret Service? Yeah, the Secret Service people and all the like deep state, like all the people that that's their, you know, that that that, that what would be, end up becoming the CIA and like the FBI, the people that were doing the equivalent of that back then, all knew that there were attempts on the president's life about to happen because they they had sensed a coup. Right, Did, that, but didn't the Secret Service? They're the ones that are. This is literally their whole entire job. And didn't they come about when Ulysses Grant was the president? In part because of because of all this shit of this. Yeah. Like now this is after part that, of the reason why they even became at, a thing after <laughs> after Abraham Lincoln, there was no longer the president can't even take a shit by himself after Abraham yeah, right. Lincoln. It's so funny well, the, that like nineteen people tried to kill Andrew Jackson, and they were like, "Ah, eh, we yeah, probably don't even need to look into it. It's fine." Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. yeah. You but, just kept beating them with a stick, and they were like, well, I mean, hell, he seems to have it under but control. Abe Lincoln, if you want to be president, you got to beat some people up, I guess. Yeah. Abe Lincoln constantly went on walks, like just he would sneak out at night and go on walks around DC with no security whatsoever. And one time he even, like, he came back and had a bullet hole through his top hat where somebody shot him and knocked it off. And, the, and everyone was like, Mr. Lincoln, Mr. Lincoln, I, we know you're folksy. We get it that you're a man of the people, but like, you are going to die. And he's like, oh, but think of how good I am for the hat industry. And so... Pretty folksy. Pretty, fo- yeah, very folksy. But like, he pretty he also... So, retort, so, so they told him, they were like, Mr. Also Lincoln... getting we- shots, folksy. It is. He wanted to go to that play. He mm. wanted to go to you know, the Ford's Theater. And they told him, they said, Mr. President, listen, any other time, maybe, but like, it is... It is threat level midnight out there right now. Like, you do not need to go in public. And he's like... I just think it would do the nation good to see me out right now because the civil war was ending and there was still obviously some rebel uprising. He's like, I think it would do people good to see me out. Like that would show them like, Hey, look, things are getting back to normal. And they're like, Mr. President, please, for the love of fucking God, do not go to the theater. And he's like, no, I think I need to go. So, the his chief of staff or whatever tells uh, all the, the secret service people, they're like, don't go with him. Don't go with him. Tell him you're not going. He thought... <laughs> He th- in his mind he thought that that would make Abraham Lincoln be like oh well I guess I shouldn't go but it didn't so there or, was like or yeah, oh right or right or or it's a internal coup I mean you could look at it that way too which like I kind of choose to you know it's like dude come on at the end of the day you still fucking go but Bush like that happened. Abraham Lincoln but you got you got those those circumstances he goes. And John Wilkes Booth knew exactly that he would be there. And also John Wilkes Booth knew that there was not going to be anybody that would stop him whatsoever. Even though Lincoln right, that, had personally requested the highest ranking security guard to come with him and he didn't fucking go. All right. that Now I'm getting into some other questions I have about Wilkes Booth and slash maybe a half point. But like. So Wilkes Booth. It took years, I would imagine, to become that guy, the dick sling and pimp of Washington, D.C. Mm-hmm. It's not like you can rock up and like three months later, that's the situation. Of he course, has done yeah. this over time. 
do you know, did they talk about, was he ever political before? It, I would imagine you get that play to that place without being super political, being able, or maybe DC's full of sociopaths, so he they was don't at, care. They all hang out with each other at night. He was at Lincoln's uh, first inauguration. And, and like, you know, there's a portrait of that or whatever. I think, I don't know that he was ever, I, I don't, I haven't gotten into yet, like who radicalized him or if like his affiliation to politics was always like, well, these congressmen and senators want to fuck girls. I've got girls. And then, so to me, it could, it could just be as much as like, he starts meeting these people this way and then becomes sympathetic to these Southern senators. I have no fucking idea. Or maybe he meets Jefferson Davis at a whorehouse, but like, Regardless, I mean, this man was... He was worried know, about his business. These sen seven senators have to leave, man. I, I you know, I got to leave the whore business. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. But, like, I don't know whether or not he was, like, he was always somebody that was a radical political guy or if he just got, like, uh, uh, radicalized by something. But, like, all I know is, like, I, it, to me, the whole point of all that was not even to educate or anything. It was to point out the fact that this is one of the most famous events that has ever happened in the history of the whole fucking world. I've read about the civil war so many fucking times you've all we've all just ran you you can't you're just walking around sometimes and boom abraham lincoln stuff will happen at you and and i never once fucking knew there was an inside co-conspirator that was a goddamn prostitute and that john wilkes booth was a fucking pimp that's bananas what is she a prostitute or just somebody who's engaged well, to one guy but wants to have sex with another oh no 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 guy. oh no no excuse me excuse me excuse me i was getting my stories mixed up around this same time um Lincoln's uh, uh, vice president, Andrew Johnson, was fucking one of Wilkes Booth's actual prostitutes. And there was a letter in his um, there was there was a letter in his mailbox that night that uh, that uh, Lincoln got assassinated. That was from John Wilkes Booth asking him if when he was going to be home. And basically their whole thought process on at first they were like, oh, he was in on it because he wanted to be president. And then they were like, no, no, no. What was actually happening was because there was also an attempt on the secretary of state. There was also an attempt on this. It was a complete, not just to kill the president, a complete coup takeover. They wanted to knock all of them out because they, they found out. And this is before there was actually any constitutional legislation that gave them any idea of what to do in a situation like that. So the government would have been completely turned over on its head with no one technically in charge. And therefore the CSA can kind of do whatever the fuck they want. So they knew all that. And basically they were wanting Andrew Johnson to be there that night with a prostitute so they could blow his fucking head off. So yes, a prostitute was also a co-conspirator. All right. Now a question. How did they know that the daughter-in-law was having sex with John Wilkes Booth? Is that from letters? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. But Corey, you answer that question uh, right after this. <laughs> All right, we're back. Go ahead. Okay. Corey. Okay. So the reason that they knew was because, and again, I'm getting all of this information from the podcast 1885 and <laughs> just regurgitating it. Um, yes, they ended up finding letters. What happened was um, they, so they were at like a presidential ball or something. And of course, Abraham Lincoln's son, Robert, I believe it was. Robert is there with his fiance and Wilkes Booth was there and he came and cut in on a dance. And like Robert just kind of started like paying attention to it and he got super, super jealous. And then like he would notice her going to the theater more. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> she would just be gone. And then finally, uh, she like admits to him that she was infatuated with him and blah, 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 blah. And then after that, they found correspondence between them. And also when they catch uh, John Wilkes Booth, when they catch him and kill him in that barn or whatever, he had his journal with him and they take the journal and he's got all these letters that John Wilkes Booth had been writing to her, all these things that he was about to send to her basically. And she'd been sending him stuff like trying to get him, trying to figure out how to get him uh, not fucking caught because it was one of the largest and most expensive manhunts in the history of the goddamn world. So yeah, they've got, they've got the proof was in the pudding on that. Because I was wondering if maybe like a letter came out in the last 20 years and, and maybe that's mm -hmm. why we didn't know about it. But this was like pretty detailed for a while. I mean, it definitely got buried there. At, they It did in part of this. They talk about it getting buried because that senator, it was his daughter and she's and for the record, I'm not done with the podcast yet, but she's uh, they're about to lock her in the fucking on the Montauk. Uh, the boat, you know, the prison boat where they just shackle you up and put you in the bottom. They're about to, they just come to the house to fucking, they're like, look, this is happening. And the senator basically tells him, he's like, okay, cool. Yeah, take my daughter. And then what if the whole world finds out about you doing this, 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 this? And they're like, 
fuck. So, so they can't arrest her. You know what I mean? Now I'm about to be on the second season where I do think that there, like some things are about to get deeper, but it was covered up for a while. It was definitely covered up for a while. It reminds me a little bit of little finger. Um, and the Spider-Man, Spider-Whisper, you yeah. know, it's like you, if you control these people's sex lives, yeah, you control them to a lot, For sure. a lot of ways. It, yeah, and especially like, obviously we all know now in the world of politics, I, an affair or two is not going to like really affect your career too much as long as you're really well, good. But back then it really fucking it, could. I mean, isn't that the whole idea with Epstein and yeah. M- Maxwell? Uh, yeah. And all, like, that's they why got these. He yeah, didn't kill himself, or either was allowed to kill himself. Either way, was because he, you know, he knows all this shit about all yeah. these yeah. really powerful people or whatever, and that's why he had to go, type of thing. Yeah, pretty like, much. It's still very much true. You, I mean, you can like, you, you know, can if find you out here fucking kids, then yeah, yeah. It, you know, people gonna have that. They right. gonna have you by the horn when it comes to that information. Yeah. That's why you probably just don't not do that. But I that's think why, it yeah. Used, it used to be like if you was just if you was a secret gay or whatever. Yeah, and I guess that still plays if you're a conservative Republican piece of shit. But again, just don't be both them things at once, and and you'll be fine. You right. know what I mean? Like, so it's not as extreme as it used to be because back then you just couldn't be like cavorting with loose women you know what i mean right. or or you would go down now it's not as puritanical but i mean it's definitely I, still a thing i bet you could it, it, i bet it was like known but hush hush because and this may not be true in america because we were founded differently but at that time in england because so many marriages were basically arranged yeah they, yeah, I, I, Andy listens to a lot of podcasts about that era, and apparently, like, they were pretty like that one specific thing they were kind of fine with. I mean, you yeah. think about Thomas Jefferson; everyone knew he was sleeping with his slaves, right? Yeah, yeah, well, that's true. With the with England back in the day and stuff, I've always thought I've always gotten the impression just from watching them shows where they you know, put powder on their faces and wigs mm-hmm. and stuff and dress up and shit. I've always gotten the impression that like if everybody looks like a clown, which why does it matter which clown you fuck? Well, sure, but no, that the but in relation to what Drew was just saying, like the way that a lot of marriages were they were basically arranged. Yeah. Even if it wasn't called like arranged <laughs> marriage, that they kind of because it was that, all about a dowry. That they had like so actually, I'm going to talk about dowries a little bit. Okay, just good. I'm going to finish this thought because of the so last like, duel, right? Uh, that I, I yeah, but I, mean, I thought about them before. But anyway, finishing what I was just about to say is that like it seems like they all that many of them kind of had this understanding back then that it was like we're married because like it's business it's advantageous to both families or whatever, but like we don't really hit for each other and we're both aware of that. Now we can't have the public knowing everything that's going on necessarily because that just ain't how this public works. Right. But I don't really care if you're out here fucking whores or whatever. with whores. Yeah. You don't really hit for me to begin with. We're just in a mutually advantageous, you know, relationship or but, whatever. But you're saying you had to hide it. From the public, I think, yeah, just because right. like they still were married, and yeah. you couldn't be. You I mean, you, that clearly that goes on these days. I think it was going on with Jada Pickett Smith and Will forever behind the scenes, and now we just kind of know about it. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, but I feel like these days, of course, they did like, hit for each other at one one point, right? Yeah, and I just don't know why. I mean, hell, I don't know. I guess it does still matter. I was gonna say like, why? Who? Why would that still be a thing? Well, I the, guess pub, it the is. public, for the record, the public is still like that. I mean, not near as much as they used to be, but like, you know, people, there's a large, it's, when you're in entertainment, there's a large part of the country that still wants to believe that two people have a happy marriage and that neither one of them have stepped out on each other. You know what I mean? Yeah. So dowries. Both of y'all probably know more about them than me. I don't so think your so. Pro, your proclivities to listen to history stuff or whatnot. But I was just thinking about like back in the day, if you had anything, if you weren't just a peasant, right, right. serf, if you had stuff and then you had a daughter, yeah, you had to like find a way to get Fancy. rid of her. Yeah. 
yeah. eventually because Mary her off. it's like, what am I going to do with this? Yeah. You know, I can't give her shit. And so like in order, <laughs> to, in order to get rid of her, you had to, you had to throw in a bunch of cows and tracts of land and shit like that. Too. Yeah. Like, yeah. But wasn't it the reverse in some cultures? Like, you what do you to mean? buy the wife? Uh, I, maybe. Maybe it depends. Maybe it might all depend on the families. And the I'd say that if the wife family. hits, that it would be like, it's like an if audition. she's from a real hidden family or yeah. something, if she's the one that's from a real hidden family, then maybe not. But I, in the last duel, I remember... The Jodie Comer's character, her dad, had to like sweeten the pot with these right. hit, with these hitting her pieces of land just to get Matt Damon's character, who didn't seem like he like really hit all that hard. In, no, in he the, didn't. Con, in the context, I mean, of he was, was in debt there. when that happened. Like to him, it was right. benefiting him. He was like, "Oh, sweet, I can you know pay off all my shit because I got right, all these but fucking." He still land. got to make demands. Right, that's of true. The family. I think with him, it was, was like, a I he was real honorable. Here. He was a yeah. super honorable guy, and so like a, a like her dad, like it would hit like, oh man, if I can have my daughter married to him, then I can in the last twenty years or so of my life, I can be like, did you see who my daughter's with? That sir, you know, blah blah blah. I don't know. Like, there's a lot of pride, I guess, that goes into it. I just think, like, do you remember how <laughs> y'all were a few years ago? How the Houston Texans had signed Brock Osweiler to yes, a big contract, and God. then he was terrible. So the following season, they wanted to get rid of him, but nobody <laughs> would take him. So they had to throw in a second round draft pick. They had to trade Brock Osweiler like and a medieval a whore. Draft pick to the Cleveland Browns just so they would take him off of their. I just feel like. It just sort of feels like that to it, me sometimes. That's a dowry, yeah. Daughter back in the day, like that's what you had to do. I bet, yeah, I bet you really had to do that when some of them looked like Brock Osweiler too, and I guarantee yeah. you, mm. of them did. Yeah, yeah, dude, like that motherfucker. And I, and, by the way, I'm, obviously, I'm not saying none of that hits. I'm just saying like that happened in in Game of Thrones with a uh, <clears throat> uh, fucking uh, what's his name Filch from. Uh, from Harry Potter, like yeah, he couldn't Walter give Frey. them bitches away. Walter <laughs> Frey. He, he was <laughs> like yeah. his whole his whole pitch to Rob was just like, look, I know they don't hit, yeah. but like, <laughs> but like, how about this? I'll help you win the war. Will you take my yeah. daughter if you can win the war? <laughs> and, and even that, even then, Rob was like, I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need the North that bad. God damn. Yeah, man. They had them 1350 teeth. Oh, boy. I mean, just rough stuff. How do you think when, what do you think casting calls look like for that? Or do you think Not that they good. try to get, yeah, because I've always. Walmart at one in the morning. I bet it looked like that. Yeah, I know, but, but I'm always. Mean, do you mean the, like, the. The girls, Corey. yeah, like, like I need like a butt ugly. Describe what they're looking for. Is yeah, that what you're saying? and then you get yeah. that role because to me, like I remember, um, John Hughes talking about the casting process of uh, of Home Alone, and like there's that scene where uh, 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 Kevin finds the picture of Buzz's girlfriend, and it's this like hideous, you know, little chubby girl. And what he did was it was just Buzz in a wig, and he did that yeah. on purpose because he didn't want a little girl to feel bad. Like he didn't want to go out there and be like, we got to find a chubby, fat little girl to play this hideous character. That would be fucked up to that person, you know? Yeah. But like so many times in, in movies, you see a person... And not only are they ugly, but the the point of them in the in the yeah. scene was that they were ugly. And it's like, well, yeah, they got a job, but God that, damn. Sometimes it's like a character actor who's skinny. They mess up their teeth. They right. ugly them up a little bit with makeup. That's the way to do or it. Or it's a character actor who just has a weird look. They know that about themselves. But a lot right. of times, it used to just be a fat person. That was literally the whole joke. Look yep. at Fatty. How could anybody y yes. ever be with Fatty? And it wasn't like they put a skinny person in a fat suit. Because here's another thing. If they did that, then there'd be a fat person being like, what about, why can't you just get a regular fat actor? So you can't, but then it's like, yeah, but do you want to cast somebody just to point the fucking finger at them? Like, that's kind of rough. I've been saying rough. that with dwarfs. We've been taking dwarfs jobs because we're not allowed to throw them anymore. Yeah, that's true. But you can cast them and stuff. Yeah, cast them in a movie about throwing them. 
Well, did people, this is going to, I'm being kind of genuinely serious. Was there people who, who got mad that they didn't like, that there weren't more actual little people in like Lord of the Rings that they yeah. did it with forced perception? Uh, well, forced I'm, not perspective? Saying he, I'm not saying he was actually mad about it, but uh, Brad Williams had a whole bit about exactly that. When I yeah. worked with him at side splitters back in the day, he had a whole thing and that was the, the entire premise. And of course, yeah, he is hilarious. Awesome. Yeah, you know, he's awesome. He's great. So he played uh, but, Nashville recently, and Donnie Singstack, friend of the pond, got him to go to one of those after-hour shows at a restaurant because Brad just loves comedy. So he's like, I'll go. And Donnie was like, he murdered harder there than he did at Zane's. Yeah. I was like, of course. Of course You're at did. a random bar show, and a famous midget walks in. That's what yeah. Brad calls himself. Of course that's the best day you've ever had. Yeah, like, you fuck yeah. I'm at this mediocre bar show, and Brad Williams walks in? Yeah. Yeah, without question. Shout out Donnie Singstack. I love that little motherfucker. Oh, I was going to say real quick, too. Andy's film, Pusher. Everybody should go watch it. Pusherfilm.com. She did a lot to like make herself not look like herself. And it was right. kind of wild to me. Obviously, I know her very well. But like I was I mean, I was literally watching it in the back of my mind, kind of going like, damn, how do you get so ugly? So like they can do that stuff. Hey, speaking of independent films, uh, March 3rd. Uh, fourth and fifth at the South Georgia Film Festival, a uh, short film that I uh, co-starred in, Edge of Town, is uh, is doing that festival. So if you're down there, uh, go check it out, Edge of Town. Sorry, just that felt organic. I wasn't. Yeah, it was. It's a great film festival too. Andy had it yeah. was in that uh, two years ago when they had it and liked it a lot. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. I still haven't seen the movie, but I guess oh. it's pretty good. <laughs> I won you a copy. You're in it. Yeah. I, no, they have. They've sent me a copy. <laughs> I still oh. haven't watched it. <laughs> I haven't had the moment. My my wife didn't doesn't want to watch it just because I'm in it. Well, yeah. I'll, dude, I'll, I mean, I hate watching myself in anything. Me too. And a whole, and, and a whole and lot I'm not, of, I'm not a whole lot of people are that way. So, like, yeah. it's really not that it's weird. It's not me. You wouldn't have. Matter of fact, there's, like, world-famous huge actors who yeah, actually never I mean, watch the movies. I can in. watch... I can watch my stand up because a I it's literally a yeah. thing you need to do in order to tag yeah, but yourself. It don't hit for me. It don't, don't hit like for it. me, but it hits for me harder than it does to watch me in a movie because I'm good at stand up. That's my thing. When I watch myself in acting, I want to watch it because I want to get better. But at the same time, I just I know what great acting is, and that ain't it. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? I wasn't so, great, but I was pleasantly surprised, expecting to hate myself with I'm, Trace. Yeah. I was like pleasantly surprised with that short film with myself specifically. I was like, oh, that right. was serviceable. But that yeah, was all well, I felt like it was. <laughs> right, right. And I played completely myself in that. And in this one, it's not it like I was, it wasn't like I was playing way against type, but like I wasn't playing Corey the Cho. I was just, you know, playing a dude. And so I, I don't know. I don't, but you're right. I don't really want to fucking, I don't want right. to watch that shit. Well, I even <laughs> like my parts as the void, but uh, I didn't talk. And also, yeah. that's very that's very much in type playing in an so, amorphous representation yeah, yeah, of sadness. Yeah. I've been trying to. Oh, find... hey, can you can we do something real quick, Trey? Can we, can <laughs> yeah? Can, because I know what we're about to do, and we need to do this. We will right, be. You right don't about... know what we're. You don't know what I was about to do. No, nope. I know it's, it's going to be a whole thing, but I know it's going to be, no, be a whole thing. No, I was no. But go ahead. Well, we'll we'll be right back after this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're back. All I was going to say is I'm annoyed over here because I know, I know that there are real world examples of what you were asking about earlier with like casting calls. Yeah. Because I feel like I've seen them pop up before and they're always funny. Yeah. But I can't find them. I've been over here trying to Google it. And you just type in like ridiculous casting calls, hilarious cast, whatever. Yeah. And it's all just actual. Yeah. Like casting for a movie we called need a Ridiculous slack. that yeah, came out. Yeah. It's like you can't, I can't. So it's just annoying me because I can't find, but I guarantee you there are pretty wild examples out there of the Dude, there ha I mean, there fucking has to be. Like you see a movie and it's like so many scenes. It's like the whole point of this scene is based on how ridiculous this person looks or how fat they are or how, so like they, they like at a certain point, they've got to just, and I know that, dude, I know that like pre- uh, like I, pre the era where people say, oh, the PC culture, blah, 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 which of course has always been a thing. But like back in the 90s, 80s, those times, the, I don't know, but they didn't give a fuck. They would just lay it, lay it right. smooth out. 
You know what I mean? Right. They just be like, and, if you ain't, if you can't show your tits, sweetheart, get the fuck out of here. Well, yeah, and exactly. in like the indie world where they don't have an HR and nobody training these megalomaniac wannabe directors yeah. on how to not do that. Dude, Andy's shown me some things that like just just in knowing how the world works, I can't believe someone put that out with their name on it of like like literally like her tits should be supple, but yeah. uh, not saggy, but big. Uh, perky, but like they're one year away from drooping. We're talking that 28 year old bartender. You really like they just get into this and you can tell they're just talking about a woman they wanted to have sex with. It's yeah, yeah. weird. Of course it's weird. But I mean, like, it's, you know, maybe they just shouldn't make movies like this. Corey, put that in your fucking mental note. But like if there's a scene where, you know, they're doing a, a oh, she's got big boobs or blah, blah, blah. They have to be like, we I'm sorry, your boobs aren't big enough. Like yeah, you can't, you can't you be to like, you just say, we need you just say, big tits for this scene. <laughs> yeah. Or yeah. Right. I guess you just go through the line and you'll be like, she's got the biggest tits. She's got it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. <laughs> I, <laughs> or yeah, I don't fucking know. It's just a whole, it's a weird world. And like, obviously women get the brunt end of it more, more often than not. But again, there's plenty of like the, the fucking seat, the series finale of Seinfeld, the whole thing is called the good Samaritan law. And it's them, just laughing as a fucking big old fat man gets robbed, you know? And like the whole point that they're laughing is like, oh yeah, look, uh, he can't chase that. He can't chase the dude down and get his wallet, but all fat, fat, fat jokes. And like the most popular show of all time. And this guy got casted specifically for that. So I just, bet, I, I bet with the fat ones in particular, that it's pretty shameless. I bet. Yeah, that I guarantee it. Cast, that they don't really sugarcoat because you know, that would have for They would eat that. Yeah. They would eat the casting call. Eating the casting call. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I bet, yeah, I bet it's like, I bet they go like too far with it. It's like, uh, if you drool, that's better. Yeah. We, if you stink, I know it doesn't matter, but I feel like that'll set the stage better. Yeah, <laughs> but imagine being like, you're waddle, not more of a waddle than a, than a standard walk. And then, good some, for this. and then some people get told you're not fat enough. And it's like, God damn, the only time yeah. I get a compliment is when I'm losing a job. You know what I mean? Like, ugh. I mean, I saw one earlier today. This is this this one is fine. I didn't bat an eye when I saw it. I'm just saying you take it up to a in thinking about a fat character. But I saw one earlier. It's like for it said it was for a dad bod, and then in parentheses it said not in shape, but not overweight either. Yeah, and uh, I'm saying that, but for someone who's supposed to be yeah fat. real big and fat, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, I bet. Fat, and we pretty, mean medically. Yeah, we mean yeah, like yes. More we mean than we, obese, if we, possible. we mean carrying around a f well, the pads for your heart at all fucking times, just in yeah. case something happens. Mustard on your neck from a week ago, fat. Yeah. I think at the top level, they just tell the casting directors exactly what they want, and the casting directors don't have to tell necessarily they just go find them. their clients. You know, of like, like they just call the agents and they're like, "Hey, you know that Uggo you got? She'd be perfect to play Frey's daughter, and that's why you don't have to tell right. her that, or you can. I don't give a shit. But if her or, teeth are fixed when she gets in here, I'm not putting her in this movie. Or I bet it is like a thing that you said where it's like they they're just like, yeah, we can just get normal looking people and just ugly them the fuck up because like they're they're with they I mean, do that. Like, I know no. they ugly them up, but like some but, of them, they definitely started with a pretty goddamn good palate. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but uh, um. Lady Brienne, right? Yeah. Gwendolyn Christie or yeah, whatever she's fine. That's her name, I think. She's like she she big. She's, a, she's a, if a she's woman, a model, she's, uh, she's tall. Yeah, right. But she's not like fucking, you know, this uh like harsh and overly masculine and hell like, no. hard, you know, hard looking person that that character right. was supposed to be. They just like, uglied her up, you know, that's what, right. that's what they do. They also probably wouldn't have cast whoever that actor was that would have looked more like the descriptions in the book. It was like, you know, right. we hear you, uh, George R. R. Martin, but, but this, is, this TV. is HBO and we've got, well, I mean, dude, they right. did that with, I mean, yeah, exactly. read the books. Tyrion is supposed to be like a, a freakish little monster. Yeah. And he's, he's and Peter Dinklage is handsome. Peter Dinklage is a great looking guy. Yeah, right. So oh, it, they did a, they did a lot of that in the yeah. show, which yeah, I don't blame them either. You know, I mean, it Mom, is TV. Mama needs me for something, and we're almost done. You can handle the last five minutes. I hope I gotta go do something. Okay, love yeah, we love you, Mama. We hope yeah, you're okay. Couple short things. Uh, so <laughs> I I want to say about during Abraham Lincoln earlier because uh, it's not directly related to anything you said, but I just think about it every now and then. 
you may have already known this, but I just remember, I remember being pretty high and watching an episode of Eastbound and Down when it was airing for the first time. So Boy, how good like, was that? How good was that moment in history and time? I know. No, it was hitting so hard. This was, so and hard. this also, this was back when like, I didn't hardly watch any TV shows. Me either. Because I was, I was Screaming. still, I was at, I was at a stage in my life where I was like, I had to work at night. I was still right. like working in bars and stuff. And I, I just couldn't set aside time to watch a TV show yeah. every week. That was right? appointment fucking have, television. And I didn't have DVR or nothing. So I just missed a lot of shit back then. But I was making it a point to watch Expound and Down because how funny it was, right? And so I'm sitting there watching. Best comedy probably, pilot of all time. Probably with Thompson. And there's a scene where Kenny is in the gymnasium talking to these kids. And he goes, and I really do think about this a lot because I, I feel like this is a wild choice creatively in making a show. Kenny, When goes, he's about to bench press in front of him? I, yeah, I think it is that same. And, the, and Ricky like, Bobby as a kid is there. He's like, uh, but I don't, I don't remember because there was a lot of scenes with him in the gym doing gym shit because that's where he got the job at. But in one of them, he goes, he says, uh, he's like, you know, and he's like stumbling through it, so it sounds like he's just like making shit or like he. he and he's got, he goes, you know, a lot of people don't realize <clears throat> Abraham Lincoln was uh, a champion wrestler yeah. in high school. Yeah. yeah. A lot of a lot of a lot of people don't know that. Anyway, we're gonna be uh, working on it. And, and like, <laughs> and I laughed so hard at that because it seemed like such an he was just making it up thing. It yeah. seemed like such an in character thing for Kenny Powers to just sort of bullshit his way through. Yeah, no, accurate. and they never address it in the show or anything. Yeah, and so I didn't find out until years later that that's literally yeah. true. That's like, legit. That true. is a fun fact about Abraham Lincoln. Yeah. and like. It's just wild to me that they did that without clarifying, like or I context it, or nothing. That it, that it played so well that, yeah. like, you, I never questioned it for a second in the moment that it was anything other than just a Kenny real Powers funny saying joke. some stupid Kenny shit. Powers say, yeah, right. Yeah, but it wasn't, and they didn't like make that clear on purpose, which made it even. I don't know. I've just I thought about that line a lot over the years because I just remember, I don't remember how I found out, but when I found out way down the road that that was literally accurate historically, and was true. It fucking blew my mind. You know mind. what? This is funny to come back full circle, but like we were talking about how like he would constantly just go on these walks without secret service and always thought he was fine. It makes sense. He was a bad motherfucker. You know what I mean? Yeah, he did. Right. He did think he, he was, was fine. Huge he was huge. Too, right? He was like, he was, massive. he was like, unless they've got a gun that is, this ain't fucking going down the way they think it's going to go down. You know, right. but yeah, that he was, he was fucking huge, which honestly, like you don't see a lot of six, six wrestlers or whatever, or whatever the fuck he was. Like, I don't know that he was actually six, six. He was like, he maybe, how fucking tall was he? He was definitely. Because people were not tall in, back then. No, they weren't. But I think he was, I mean, he would, he though, I think was like at least six, three, six, hey. three to six, five or something like that. Which I that, think like six, three was the six, six back then. Yeah, that was huge back then. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's fucking see here. Well, why would they, God damn it. Abe Lincoln height. Cause yeah, like people, I remember when I went to see six, four, that's a fucking huge motherfucker back then. I yeah. remember when I went to, when I went to Washington DC the first time as a kid, um, they, you know, like we went to Ford's theater and then they took us to like where he died and shit. And they showed us the bed that he died on. And I, and I, it stuck out to me at the time as well. They, he, that I remember they said he had to, they had to lay him horizontally on the bed because he wouldn't fit. And it was a, that was a normal bed for people back then. But like they had to like position him weird because his like legs and head kept fucking dangling what, off what of do you, it. What do you mean like diagonally? Yeah, di diagonally. What did I say? Okay. Horizontally. Oh, my bad. I meant diagonally. Lay on a bed, but yeah, yeah, right. I meant, I meant diagonally. Yeah. <laughs> Di yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but anyways, yeah, no, he was a huge motherfucker. But yeah, ba he's a bad motherfucker. Six, four fucking champion wrestler. He probably just like, yeah, you know, nobody's going to fucking take he me. He was probably it, just wishing motherfuckers fuck, would. I believe that Abraham Lincoln... Dude, I would say he was the first instance in America of wishing a motherfucker would. 
Yeah. Like the first famous example of like that's going to the Ford, going to the Ford's theater I don't without know, dude. Andrew Jackson pretty famously wished motherfuckers would yes, as well. That's that's one hundred percent true. He was a pretty wish motherfucker would type of dude. Andrew he, Jackson. He had, he had like twenty <laughs> attempts on his life that didn't yeah. work. Obviously, no, I know. He Fucking stayed. Get, he stayed getting shot, and he'd just like walk it off and then shoot them back. Yeah. Man, what a fucking insane time. Lunatic. I know. I, I, I cut like, so hell, I'll take an opportunity to throw out there for the listeners. If you want to holler at me on Patreon, you should do so. Patreon.com slash Trey Crowder. One of the things I do on there is I review politicians. I've only done this once for Andrew Jackson, but I will do more of it. And that's it. Uh, like, go I'll go back in the past and review one. And I yeah, reviewed yeah, yeah. Andrew Jackson once. The idea being like, I know we think everything is crazy now, and I'm not saying yeah. it's not. It is. It is, and it don't hit. Don't get me wrong. But listen to some of this shit yeah. <laughs> about this dude who was the president. president. And, yeah. like, and it's fucking wild, dude. He he had a, I didn't know until I did that that Andrew Jackson had a bunch of his supporters take over the White House. Yes, people, there was a coup. They like, they like wrecked the White House in support of Andrew Jackson and all and all, all kinds of wild ass shit about him. And uh, yeah. Was that Our during his first wild. president? Was that during his first term or his second? I think it was the, the first one, like at the beginning, kind of. Yeah, dude. Like it, it really, like, dude, first off, what we were just talking about, the sheer thought of a president going on a walk by themselves is also one of the craziest things you can really think of. Yeah. Like based on like what how how it is for presidents now like they're not even they're not allowed to drive cars the entire 4 to 8 years that they're in office like but back then and also the White House was just unlocked and people would just like roll up. You know, they just walk in and be like, "Hey, I've got a grievance." And they'd be like, "All right, let's hear his grievance and uh eat this wheel of cheese." You know, like it was yeah. a fucking that was just bananas. But uh, so, yeah, go to patreon.com slash Trey Crowder. And also, I haven't got to Old Hickory yet, but over at. No, that ain't it. I'm doing the wrong goddamn thing. <laughs> that ain't it either. That's it. Corey, <laughs> over at CoreyWritesForYou.com, which is my newsletter, le letter, newsletter, my newsletter slash blog, I'm doing a, um, a series called This Week in Southern History, where I take an event that happened this week in Southern history. And I talk about it and uh, Andrew Jackson hasn't come up yet. Uh, but because of the era in which he lived and him being from Tennessee and all he will. And I'm waiting for the right time because I'm pretty pumped to, to write about that fucking lunatic. So if you like uh, uh, stories like that, also there's, you know, journals and there's podcasts and stuff, go to Corey writes dot com and subscribe. Uh, I would really, really um, appreciate that. Yeah. All right. Well, that'll do it. Hey, that will do it. Uh, oh, yeah. All oh, oh, right. Yeah. Thank you all for listening to the Well Read Show. We'd love to stick around longer, but we got to go. Tune in next week if you got nothing to do. Thank you. God bless you. Good night, Amsky. How about that? Yeah. That's it.